I'm John Jones, group publisher of Vanguard Magazine. I am your host for this inaugural edition of the Vanguard Podcast. Welcome to the Vanguard Weekly Radio Program, designed to give updates, opinions, and news of the Canadian defense industry. In this week's show, we have a pretty busy program out of the gate. We're going to talk about our findings for the latest edition of Vanguard magazine. And we've got two pivotal industry interviews that you're going to want to hear more about. So let's begin with the latest issue of Vanguard magazine, which is now in your mailbox. In this issue, we're taking a look at armor, the lightest armor available and how it's getting pretty heavy, the future of underwater warfare, and procurement, the golden mean. One of the highlights that really became quite interesting to me was to examine in this month's issue of Vanguard the research that is being conducted by NRC's Chris Kingston and Benoit Chimard. These are the folks that are on the cover of this edition. Both men are actually outspacing NASA in the race to bring better, stronger, and lighter materials to the defense industry. So you'll be very interested in learning about what's sitting in their lab right now. In addition, we have two key interviews in this edition of Vanguard Radio. First, our Editor-in-Chief, Terry Pavlik, has an interview with Vice Admiral Retired Peter Cairns, talking about the Shipbuilding Technology Forum that is coming up on December 8th. Hello, this is Terry Pavlik, the Editor-in-Chief of Vanguard, And I have with me Peter Cairns, Vice Admiral and President of the Shipbuilding Association. Hello, Peter. How are you? Hello, Terry. I'm fine, thank you, and thanks for having me on. It's been a a great pleasure being able to work with you for the last, oh, year and a half, I'd say, since we've decided to put our heads together. And I'm really excited about all the spin-out and unique technologies that are coming out of Canada And I feel that it's really been spurned on by the NSPS program. And I know that we've been talking about how that is an important component, but not the focal component when it comes to the marine and shipbuilding industries. And I know that one of the reasons that was very important to you as the president of the Shipbuilding Association was really to bring stakeholders together and build upon and develop a conversation where everybody can express lessons learned and how we can take advantage of emerging technologies in building a really strong and vibrant marine and shipbuilding industry in Canada. Can you share with me where you think Canada is very strong and has a lot of potential that maybe we're just not tapping into? For me, I believe that NSPS will change the the shipbuilding industry in this country, but at the moment, it only affects uh, very few shipbuilders. Uh, We are not a large shipbuilding nation. We have a few good companies, and not necessarily very large companies, but good companies. And we do have a very strong marine industry for the supply of marine equipment to ships and vessels of all kinds. For those who are involved in NSPS, they get a leg up on uh, technology and process, and they will get a leg up just by virtue of the fact that the government requires them to. For the rest uh, of the uh, of the folks in the industry, there's a requirement to keep on top of what's going on and to learn about what's going on. And this is where I thought that the uh, the association in conjunction with Vanguard uh, could give uh, people a leg up on on what is happening in the world, particularly uh, with new technology. I believe that technology will be the the savior of the industry and that uh, we will and we have the ability, we have this the education and uh, although our workforce is small, it needs to be bigger, but we have a very educated group of people in this country that we can in fact turn technology to our advantage. But it is uh, one of the things we have to do is to to try and inform people about what is available, what is happening in the world, what uh, we think 
could be useful to folks in our own country and also to find out what the people in our own country, the small companies, are actually doing uh, with technology. There are companies in Canada that are doing marvelous things with uh, technology that a lot of us don't know very much about. So that's really the reason we're, we're really involved in this uh, at the moment, because we think it has a benefit to everybody in the industry, whether you're large or small. I agree, Peter. And over the last year, we've had two highly successful shipbuilding forum events. Um, last fall, it focused more specifically on the technologies and um, inviting people from industry to come and share their experiences on how they've uh, been able to, technology has able to really change how they do and bring value to all the participants. And I know that we've had wonderful feedback from the uh, military as well as the government organizations that have attended and they found the information very useful. In terms of our, our next shipbuilding event, we're looking at taking all that feedback that we got and moving on to the next level. And my understanding is we want to kind of look at what some other countries have done and how they've pulled themselves into this highly skilled and, and recognized force or talent force and body within the marine area, as well as uh, very strong shipbuilders, and how um, they've been able to take marine technology and emerging technology and export it around the world. I find that really fascinating. Is there anything that you can share what some of the learning outcomes would be from this fall's shipbuilding technology forum? We have to deal the hand that we are dealt, okay? We have to play that hand. And we have to play that hand regardless of whether it's free trade or whether it's restricted trade or whether there's tariffs or whether there are no tariffs. And we have to somehow uh, build strategies and abilities and produce products that uh, will allow us to, to, uh, to work in that environment. I believe particularly uh, in uh, in some of the marine industry I industry we have not been and I have to be careful here because some people in the marine industry have been very aggressive but some have not been very aggressive about looking at the worldwide market but if you look at some of the other small countries that, that are out there that have the same sort of situation or they're in the same sort of situation that Canada is uh, the Netherlands the uh, Danish uh, whoever uh, they seem to do very well and they seem to, to have a strategy and they seem to be able to, to tackle these issues and, and uh, make themselves uh, strong players on the world scene. Uh, we have it to a degree with some of our companies. You know, we have some small companies that are world-renowned. World but I think we want to uh, have more than that. We want to actually have a marine industry that is as world-renowned as we can make it and it may sound like pie in the sky, but unless you actually try to achieve up, up in that level, uh, you, you're, you're not going to really achieve uh, very much at all. And, and that's my personal view. And that's what, what drives me, I believe, to, uh, to get involved with Vanguard to do these technical forums to try and bring these things out in the open or discuss these things that have not necessarily been discussed in open forums amongst industry people very much, and certainly in the, with the people that I deal with. And I think that we can do that. I think that we can put plans together, and I think that we can work and we can build an industry uh, we can, that will be uh, competitive on the world market and that uh, will have a place for, uh, for, there will be a place for Canadians. There's also an issue, particularly in the marine uh, side of the house, with the Maritime Defense of Canada. Uh, you know, as much as you talk about uh, armies and air forces, this country is surrounded by oceans, and these oceans are have to be patrolled by navies. And they, and if you look at what's going on with refugees in the world today, uh, I we have to deal with that sort of those sort of problems at some stage is going to arrive in North America. And we have to decide how we're going to deal with that, and we're going to have to put marine forces and marine coast guards, uh, patrol forces together that will allow a uh, 
coherent way of dealing with these incoherent uh, issues. And I, 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 you know, I don't have an answer for that, but I just think that we have to be really thinking about it and start working uh, very hard towards towards those sorts of things. And I think our little tech forums play a role in there. The comparative advantage that we bring to the table is uh, is significant to the advantage of all Canadians. In closing, Peter, um, do you have any final words? Well, I think I don't have a, a, any closing words except for to tell people that they need to consider this tech forum and come and listen to what's going to be presented and uh, take the lessons away and uh, and start thinking uh, about uh, about the future of, uh, of our industry and of their industry and to uh, think about making Canada a very, very uh, well-known and Strong might not be the right word, but a player in the world that people want to uh, do business with, and I think that's what we're uh, we're underlying, what we're really trying to achieve, so that everybody lives better, particularly not only Canadians but other folks in the world too. So uh, thanks very much, Terry. And Peter, I'd like to thank you as well. It's a pleasure as always speaking with you. That was Terry Pavlik, Editor-in-Chief of Vanguard Magazine, and Vice Admiral Retired Peter Cairns talking about the Shipbuilding Technology Forum. For more information, go to shipbuildingforum.ca. Yesterday, I had an opportunity to speak with Tony about the Vimy Award 25th Anniversary Gala Dinner. Joining me is Tony Batista. Executive Director for the Conference of Defense Association. This week, on November 6th, the Vimy Award Gala Dinner will be taking place. And this is a very special dinner, and it's also a very special anniversary. Welcome, Tony, and I'm wondering if you can tell us a little more about what to expect. Thank you very much, John. Happy to be uh, with you. Yes, let me um, let me start by uh, saying that the CD Institute's Vimy Award celebrates its uh, silver anniversary this year, the 25th anniversary of the award, and we're really excited. We're expecting a large audience uh, in the neighborhood of 550, uh, although we know for sure the exact number after tomorrow's uh, announcement of the new government because we do uh, have uh, a few pending invitations. And, um, and it will be a, a, a grand affair. We're really looking forward to it. That sounds excellent. And it's also my understanding that you have a special commemorative issue coming out. Can you tell us a little more about that? Indeed. This year, we, um, we thought that as a special project to go with the Vimy Award, we would uh, have a commemorative book that describes not only the history of the award itself, uh, and also who started it back in 1990, but also detailed a page on each one of the 25 recipients, uh, of course the 25th being the, um, the honorary Navy Captain Hugh Siegel being the 25th. So each one of them will have a special page in the book. There's also uh, included in the book a history of the CDA Institute itself. They almost go hand in hand. The Institute was uh, created in 1987, the Vimy Award in 1991, uh, although the, the work for the, uh, for the award started in 1990. So there are, the, the history almost parallels one with the other. And so we decided to have this commemorative special book, which will be uh, unveiled and, uh, and available to all guests this Friday, 6th of November. Well, thank you very much. That sounds like it's going to be a great event and a great book to look forward to. For further details on this event and the dinner and the book, you can go to www.cdainstitute.ca for further details. Thank you, Mr. Baptista, and we really appreciate this overview. Thank you, John. Take care. So again, this event is taking place this Friday, November 6th. For more information, please go to the cdainstitute.ca. Hope to see you there. If you would like more information on any of the topics that I've discussed today or would like to be a subscriber to Vanguard, please go to vanguardcanada.com. That's all for this week's Vanguard radio program. We hope you enjoyed the show and please feel free to send me any comments or information that you'd like to hear more about. 
In upcoming editions of the show, look for additional event announcements and key features and opinions on what's going on in your industry. This is John Jones, group publisher of Vanguard and Canadian Government Executive Magazines. It's been a pleasure to be with you, and we look forward to talking with you again next week. 